Good morning. I would like to thank Dr. Scott and Dr. Targaruna, as well as SAGES, for this opportunity to present to you today some of our research from the Carolinas on this timely and important concept of fixation affecting quality of life after ventral hernia repair. I have no disclosures, and we have no conflicts of interest relevant to this work. Ventral hernia repair is performed annually nearly 350,000 times, and we're always looking at ways to improve outcomes. We've seen that use of mesh has reduced recurrence rate from 50 to 75% in inguinal hernia repair, and the same has held true for incisional hernias as well as umbilical hernia repair. In inguinal hernia repair, we've seen a shift of focus on outcome measures to include quality of life. Yet the same acknowledgement after ventral hernia repair has been lacking and yet can affect up to 39% of our patients. In our previous work, which is currently in press and had been presented at the World Hernia Congress, we showed that one of the strongest predictors within a predictive model to look at chronic pain after ventral hernia repair was actually preoperative pain. And in fact, the increased level of severity of preoperative pain would increase their rates of chronic pain long term, up to 9.8 times at 12 months. Additionally, we looked at one month postoperative pain as also increasing rates of long term and chronic pain after ventral hernia repair. For those with severe pain, 7 to 22 times that risk. We wanted to use this model and better refine it to include surgically controllable parameters to be able to decide if type and quantity of fixation, as we theorized, this would predict pain in ventral hernia repair. We then formulated a predictive model based on this hypothesis. We utilized the International Hernia Mesh Registry. This was initiated by Ethicon and is actively enrolled, registered with clinicaltrials.gov. It utilizes 30, over 35 institutions internationally and has patient-recorded personal outcomes, which is collected by a third party not related to the company or surgeon, so that we can minimize observer and expectation bias. We looked at all ventral hernia repair from 2007 to 2015 to formulate the predictive model. The IHMR utilizes the Carolinas Comfort Scale, this is a disease-specific quality of life survey that utilizes three different symptoms, mesh sensation, pain, and activity limitation, in eight different categories. Asymptomatic by this scoring is defined as mild yet not bothersome to no symptoms compared to those that are symptomatic, which are mild yet bothersome to disabling symptoms. To formulate the predictive model, we included all ventral hernia repair and excluded any patient who didn't have quality of life data. We then looked at patient demographics as well as usual operative characteristics included and specifically looked at fixation, suture, tack, glue, a combination of these, or no fixation. We also included usual postoperative outcomes and our quality of life was recorded preoperatively as well as at one, six, and 12 months. To develop the predictive model, we then took these clinically significant pre predictive variables a priori, specifically focused on fixation, and as well looked at our previous work, included those with statistical significance from that model, so we could control for the factors that we already knew increased rates of pain as we formulated this new predictive model. We then performed univariate logistic regression analysis so that we could associate prediction with the binary outcome variable. We then took these significant variables and simultaneously placed them into multivariable logistic regression model. We performed backward elimination with a retention p-value set at less than 0.15, which is standard for predictive modeling. We then looked at multicollinearity, which was assessed by variance inflation factor, and a Substantial multicollinearity is not desired within a predictive model, which could be defined as greater than 2.5. We then performed a goodness of fit assessment, which helps us to calibrate and know that there's not a significant difference between the model as well as individual original out values. We then formulated our final model, which determined an area under the curve. 
And this helped us to discern those that were clinically diagnostically accurate with greater than or equal to a 0.7 value, which was helping us to discriminate between the predictive model that would or would not discern pain predicted after ventral hernia repair. We then took it a step further to perform internal validation by bootstrap analysis, which is shown to be a superior method of internal validation, taking 200 replications of the data set and applying the predictive model to each replication the, to then apply that statistical analysis to correct our area under curve. Ventral hernia repair was performed in 950 patients. Average age was 57, with a BMI of 31. Preoperatively, patients had pain 60% of the time, and 13% of those were on narcotics. An average of 1.7 repairs were repaired previously from prior repairs about 23% of the patients in the data set. When we look at open and ventral hernia repair in these moderate-sized hernias, we see that most commonly, lightweight mesh was used. In addition, the location of the mesh specifically for open ventral hernia repair was either preperitoneal or retrorectus, whereas in laparoscopic repair, it was most commonly intraperitoneal or IPOM with no defect closure. For type of fixation in open repair, most commonly was suture fixation alone, compared to laparoscopy, which was suture plus tack fixation, yet 18% used tack fixation alone. In these moderate sized defects, we saw that postoperative complications as well as recurrences were equal whether either technique were used. Follow up averaged between 19 to 20 months with a median follow up of 23 months. There was no difference in complication or recurrence rate dependent upon which type of fixation was used. When we look at our final predictive models for open ventral hernia repair, at one month, we see that older age is protective, whereas female gender and preoperative pain scores were predictive of pain at this time point. Heavyweight mesh was as well protective. The AUC was 0.72 and corrected after internal validation to 0.7. At six months, we found similarity with preoperative pain predicting postoperative pain, and one month pain at nearly five times increased risk of having pain at six months. Heavyweight mesh and suture fixation were protective. And the six months AUC was 0.76, corrected after internal validation to 0.73. For the 12 month final model after open ventral hernia repair, we see that older age remained consistent to be protective for pain, whereas female gender, preoperative pain, and one month postoperative pain was nearly two times increased risk for all to predict pain at one year after open ventral hernia repair, and heavy wet mesh maintained protection. There was no method of fixation that was significant to increase risk of pain at one year after open ventral hernia repair. The AUC after correction was 0.72. For our model for laparoscopy, so at one month, older age was still protective, similarly as we saw for open, and female gender preoperative pain score increased risk of pain at this time point. Protective factors included lightweight mesh, as well as tack fixation if less than or equal to 40 tacks were used, even in combination of suture fixation. We wanted to further define this, so we looked at number of tacks. we would known that for less than 40 tacks was protective, However, the greater than 40 tax was 2.2 times increased risk, and greater than or equal to 60 tax was 2.8 times increased risk in laparoscopic ventral hernia repair at one month. In regards to type of tack, absorbable tax at one month actually had increased risk of pain 3.9 times that of absorbable tax. However, this was only significant in cases in which less than 20 tax were used. We did see that the most common absorbable tack used had a height profile of 7.22 millimeters. The one month AUC corrected after internal validation was 0.67. For our six month model for laparoscopic ventral hernia repair, preoperative pain as well as one month postoperative pain was predictive of pain at this time point. 
the corrected AUC after internal validation were made 0.7. And for our one-year final model after laparoscopic ventral hernia repair, looked very similar to the six-month findings and also found that there was no method of fixation that affected pain after ventral, laparoscopic ventral hernia repair. When we looked at the one-year AUC, we saw after correction it was 0.68. So in summary, at one month after open ventral hernia repair, consistencies of the model of younger age, female gender, and preoperative pain increasing rate of postoperative pain at this time point, yet heavyweight mesh made protective. At six months, preoperative pain and pain at one month was significantly increased for pain at six months, up to four times increased risk, whereas heavyweight mesh and suture fixation was protective. At 12 months, consistency throughout the model with younger age, female gender, preoperative pain, and pain at one month postoperatively increased risk of pain at one year out after open ventral hernia repair. Heavyweight mesh remained protective, and no method of fixation increased risk of pain after open ventral hernia repair. For laparoscopic ventral hernia repair, at one month, younger age, female gender, and preoperative pain increased risk of pain postoperatively, whereas lightweight mesh and tack fixation, when less than 40 tacks or 40 were used, even in combination with suture fixation. At six months, preoperative pain and pain at one month were the most significant factors predicting chronic pain, and this was similar findings at 12 months with no method of fixation affecting rates of pain at 12 months after laparoscopic ventral hernia repair. So in summary, as we continue to refine techniques of ventral hernia repair to reduce recurrence, we wanted to look at if our methods of fixation are affecting rates of quality of life, which is an important outcome measure. And while we did not see a difference at 12 months out after ventral hernia repair, we need to consider this as we grade our hernia repair as a good repair. If you have a hernia repair that doesn't recur but has poor quality of life, it's still a bad hernia repair. Thank you.